let's talk about cooldowns. What in the world they are? Do they impact performance? Do they help us bounce back in recovery? When should we use them? And when maybe we shouldn't. So first off, a cooldown is very simple. It's this easy running or easy activity that you do after a hard workout or a race. It's go jog a mile or two after the workout. And the theory is essentially this, is that some easy running after a hard workout will allow us to get back to normal and then hopefully bounce back, recover, and feel better the next day or increase our recovery. The reality is a little bit more complex to what actually is occurring. So let's start with this. What benefits do we actually see? Is one we do see that if you go jog after a workout or cool down, you do get a, a higher rate of clearance of blood lactate. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, it's really indifferent if I'm not coming back and trying something else, another race, you know, within 30 minutes or so. Even if I laid on the ground and did nothing, blood lactate would relatively quickly, you know, back down to normal, 30, 45 minutes, maybe, if I'm doing absolutely nothing. If I cool down, that might speed up to 15, 20 minutes, depending on the, again, the size of the blood lactate increase. It's not this huge thing where it's like, oh, we're clearing out lactate, this is great, unless it's to bounce back for, for a subsequent race if you're like doubling. The other things in terms of Sometimes we say, oh, it helps with delayed onset muscle soreness. No, research isn't very good there. At best, it's mixed, okay? Helps with recovery. Eh, again, mixed, depending on, you know, the how you measure recovery, whether, or, uh, you know, uh, objective measure of recovery. Again, the research is mixed and basically shows that it doesn't help too much on at least the next day recovery. The one exception is, there is, to a degree, sometimes a perception where the RPE of the next day goes down based on if you cooled down or not. But other objective measures of recovery, even in terms of performance differences, not shifted because of a cool down. So why in the world do we do it? I think there's a couple things that are actually important here. First is we talked about lactate coming down to normal. I think the real key is the nervous system and the socialization or decompression aspect of a cool down. So after we do a really hard workout, a really hard race, our sympathetic nervous system is essentially on overdrive. Okay, And there is some data and research that shows that if we do a simple, easy cool down, and even more so, Again, not as much research on this, but we know this from other studies, even more so with other people, we switch into that more parasympathetic state and get our nervous system essentially back down to zero and normal better. And there is some data that shows because of that, if we do a cool down, get that nervous system kind of release, switch our HRV, which is a, a measure of kind of recover and readiness, will improve based on if we did that cool down or not. So I think if we look at the cool down as a almost nervous system aspect of there is some some justification for it. It gets us down to normal. It gets us almost out of this like stress and threat mode and into a, a state that is more parasympathetic dominated where we have this recovery restore or if we're socializing, tend and befriend. I think the socialization aspect can improve on this because what do we normally do is if you're a part of a team, if you're competing as a team, you cool down with others. So you make sense of what just occurred. You get to decompress in a non-threatening way where you said, hey, that workout was great or it sucked or that race did not go as planned. It gives you this time before you have to analyze it with a coach or other where you're like, okay, I get to decompress in a non-threatening way with friends or teammates or colleagues. I think that is a huge, huge benefit to cool down. This is why as a coach, 
whenever a race would go poorly, I'd say a couple things, you know, often try and bolster them up, but I wouldn't dive into this is what you need to do. This is where it went wrong. I'd say go cool down with your friends. Why? It took some of that edge off. It got them out of that super stressed state, got them into a state where they could kind of be a little bit more rational and we could have a discussion about it. And it bought me time as a coach from saying something that might have put them further in the hole after a bad performance. So this is why cool downs, I think, are actually important from recovery, even if we see no changes in soreness or anything like that. The other thing that I think a cool down does that we forget about is it is a training effect. Now I get it. Often our cool downs are, you know, two miles, 15 minutes at a very slow pace. And you're like, Steve, what kind of training effect does that have? Well, when the studies have looked at, you know, having athletes cool down after or not over, you know, a several week or month period, what they found is that there often is in well-trained endurance athletes, a differential between the performance of those who cooled down versus those who did not. Again, we only have a couple studies, but the couple studies have shown this. Now, why is that the case? The researchers suggested, well, it's the training effect. Because after every workout, these athletes are getting one or two more miles more. And if they're working out two times a week in a race, maybe two to three times a week, you're looking at a significant bump in mileage, or at least a small bump in mileage that could help and furthermore this mileage often takes place even though it's very low intensity it takes place in a pre-fatigue state so you don't need to go that intense to get some sort of aerobic adaptations because your muscles are either running low on fuel they're running higher on fatigue products you're uh, easy to recruit fibers are fatigued so you're having to even on the cool down dig into fibers that maybe normally aren't trained aerobically as well, all of that comes into play to give us a training adaptation. Now, the good news is this, is we can take advantage of this. This is why in high school, my coach, after races especially, would say, hey, you're racing every week. Why not just get a longer cool down in? Because I couldn't get in the long run every week because we were racing all the time. So what happened, I'd run my mile or two mile or 800 or what have you, and then I'd go on a 45 minute, very easy, very slow cool down. Why? You get in a fatigue state and then we get this nice little aerobic bump where we get to maintain our aerobic system because we're training it again in this pre-fatigue state to a degree. Same thing if we looked at lactate, although there's not research on this, you can theorize that again, going into a cool down relatively soon after a workout might have some beneficial training effects in terms of blood lactate clearance, right? Because all of a sudden now you've got a bunch of lactate from a hard interval workout or hard race, and you're saying, hey, I'm gonna go for a nice, easy, or whatever normal run, and your body has to clear that stuff out and get used to doing that, so you, you might Again, theoretically, help supporters that, that do so or aid in that. In addition, we can look at other ways that aren't just an easy workout that may be able to give us some training adaptation. For example, when I was training with Alan Webb and Scott during the, you know, during my grad school days, they would often do what we call general strength as part of the cool down. Yes, we would still jog easy. Yes, we would do those things. Strength was essentially, you know, movement and quote unquote core, but in a movement type way where we're working again on our essential posture and stability and some strength, body weight strength in a state where we are pre fatigued. Again, we're not loading things up, although I'll talk about that in a second. We're not necessarily loading things up but we're doing some strength workout in body weight strength in a pre-fatigue state, which hopefully translates to doing what Dan John, the strength coach and one of my mentors, good friends, says is the whole key to strength for runners, which is allowing them and giving them the ability to be tall while tired, essentially not break down. 
So sometimes you can include things in your cool down activity, which aren't that strenuous, right? Body weight strength that can help us, again, get a little bit of a training effect. The other interesting uh, insight or way to maybe it's adaptation is something I, I uh, borrowed from the late great David Torrance for early is um, something I saw him do once after a hard workout is his cool down was essentially regressive. Meaning once he was done with the workout, he started with an 800 kind of steady. I'd call it like marathon pacer a little bit faster, which was hard relatively after doing a bunch of 200s and 400s, right? You're really tired. He didn't wait that long, maybe a, a minute or two, and then went straight into 800 at, I don't know, 230-ish. Now for David, who was running 333, 332, basically 50-ish mile, like 230 for the 800 is not fast, okay? But after a hard workout, what it is, is it's a steady session, steady thing, will lactate levels say, well, you're in a very pretty fatigued state and you're saying, hey, I'm gonna go into a high, high end aerobic state and kind of push things a little bit aerobically to develop, okay? Again, no research on this, something I saw, and I think there's some valid validity to this. It's almost like getting an extra little bang for our buck of training our aerobic system. Now it could be 800, it could be a mile, it could be slightly slower, but basically something high-end aerobic, taking advantage of the pre-fatigue to get a little bit bang for your buck. And then after you've done that 800 at 230 something or mile at marathon pace, you gradually just slow down, slow down to get that transition, that nervous to, you know, stasis, essentially like that. So we can think of how do we do these things? And the last thing, and there is some evidence of this, is if we are worried about that balance between our anaerobic and our aerobic, our speed and endurance, one thing that we can do early in the season is if we do a longer or a stronger in terms of sustained high-end aerobic work as part of our cool down, it will kind of blunt to a degree some of the negative effects of the anaerobic system or anaerobic workout. Meaning we might not get of our bang for our buck for the workout, but it, it kind of counterbalances it a little bit. Early on, if you're worried, you know, those 400s or that, that race taking away your aerobic system and, and the classic seesaw of Lydiard-esque running, you can do a longer cool down and it will help things. And then the last one I'll mention as part of a cool down is Again, one I learned from Webb, which I would call an advanced technique, which I wouldn't do for many people, but as part of the quote unquote cool down after he jogged, he would do something in the opposite direction. Meaning often we'd, not often, but sometimes we'd go right into the weight room and do a couple of heavy squats or power activities. Again, you have to be careful you're in pre-fatigue state. But the idea here is to go in the opposite direction of what we did. So for example, if we did a threshold run, then you'd go in and do something short and with. Um, and the idea was, again, somewhat to get a training effect, but more so as well to get like a hormonal or boost effect to take us from that catabolic state to anabolic to get some tests after you've done some endurance work. I wouldn't suggest that for most people, but for Webb, who was kind of a beast of an athlete whose skill was in recovery, it served some good purposes. So that's what we look at when we look at the cool down is I think it's mostly social and nervous system shift, not as much of the other stuff and soreness and all, all that good stuff. The last thing I'll say is you can do things during the cool down to interfere with adaptation or during the cool down period. This is where taking ice baths after strength training, and although the data is a little bit more mixed, it depends on the exact type of workout, even after hard workouts, can blunt some of the adaptations because essentially the damage is the signal, meaning the damage is the signal to adapt, the inflammation is telling your body, hey, we need to repair and recover. And if you try and blunt that initially, you blunt some of the long-term adaptations. So I always tell athletes, hey, if part of your kind of return to normal 
is to jump in an ice bath, create some space around it. Don't do it right after. And even more so, periodize it so you aren't doing those ice baths when the adaptation matters. And maybe you're saving it towards when like the adaptation is just maintenance mode and you're just trying to rec- makes you feel good. Um, there's also some potential, some data that shows taking things like antioxidants right after a hard workout. You might think, hey, I'm helping myself recover. But again, some of the adaptations, depending on the workout, are caused by those reactive oxygen species, which, hey, we need to. So, um, also, I would be wary of taking iron right after a workout, not so much that it blunts the adaptations, but that iron absorption is blunted after hard workouts. <laughs> So if you take it right after, for example, if you're anemic or, you know, a distance runner is running a ton and you take iron, just be aware of that. So long story short is I think here is one of these cases where there's not a ton of science that points in a great direction for cooldowns, but there's enough especially on the nervous system and a little bit on the socialization decompressing side. And if you look at the science, it tends to show that the perception of readiness, the perception of decreased RPE afterwards doing a cool down of feeling better is there. And I think that warrants things. And I think we have to combine the history, which shows that cool downs are one of those things that relatively early on got instituted and then stuck around. And despite some of the research saying, hey, what are you doing here? They've stuck around. And I think that generally tells us, not all the time, but generally tells us there's something there. And the last point I'll say is remember those studies, adaptation, um, and athletes actually in endurance sport performing better when there's a cool down, even though we don't have a great explanation. It could be just the increased training volume or the training volume under pre-fatigue. So to me, I would include a cooldown. What does it include? As I said, depends on the level. Generally, I like it between a mile or two for most, a two mile cool down, you know, 15 minutes or so. It's a good way to get volume in. If you're higher mileage or during a period where you're trying to maintain the aerobic system, bump that up. If you want some sort of general strength, include it during the, uh, the jogging portion of it, as well as a way to get some extra work in some pre-fatigue. There you go, cool down, hope you enjoy it. If you did, don't forget, check out my new book, Win the Inside Game. It's all about the mental side of performance. It talks about a little bit of social recovery in here and uh, oxytocin, cortisol, all of those things that occur. So hopefully that helps.